So I've been given 10 minutes to basically discuss the, the question, uh, is the pink tide advancing or retreating? I think it's a, it's a good question to ask, and it's very much uh, a question that many, many have been asking, although it's a slightly different question to perhaps what, what was being asked just a few years ago, which was really as, as the pink tide ended, uh, of course, we're given the re-elections of some centre-left parties or ongoing protests, questions now being rephrased. But I think, as with every question, the, the framing of a question sort of sort of predetermines a, a certain answer. And I want to sort of, in trying to answer this question, really sort of draw out some of the weaknesses of looking at what's occurring in Latin America. Firstly, it's just simply a question of a pink tide um, and where that term came from, what that represents. And secondly, can we just simply define it as either advancing or, or retreating? So to start with, pink tide is a, is a term, uh, it, uh, one that has been largely popularized in the media. Uh, the, 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 what's implicit in the definition of the pink, pink tide is both of the words are important. Pink, to differentiate from the, the more red uh, or more revolutionary uh, uh, previous wave of struggles in the 60s and 70s, very much uh, symbolized by the, the Cuban revolution, but also the many other uh, guerrilla and urban insurgent uh, movements of, of that time. Uh, so in that sense, uh, it is different, uh, both in its political outlook, more moderately political, but also in its strategy of preferring elections over insurrection. That's generally why the term pink is in, in the pink tide. Um, but the reality is when we look at the, the, the left forces over the last two decades in Latin America, we can see that there's an extremely broad spectrum within this pink. Everything from, well, the old red, uh, the Cuban revolution, which continues to be there and has been an important part of the process of, of change that's occurred in, in the region, through to the, uh, and, and, and the revolutionary struggles that's unfolded under the leadership of Hugo Chavez in Venezuela with the Bolivarian revolution, through to the other end of the spectrum where you have people like former Chilean president, Michelle Bachelet, who was essentially the equivalent of a, a Labour Party leader, uh, the Socialist Party leader, the traditional centre-left party, and to uh, Manuel Celaya in, in Honduras, who really only became part of the pink tide after he'd been removed from power, having initially been a traditional politician from a traditional party, who pretty much only simply tried to implement some very mild reforms, but was toppled from, from government when he dared to raise the idea of a, of a constituent assembly. Focusing as well just simply on the, the nature of the government sidelines the important struggles that have been occurring, including in some cases insurrectional struggles that have occurred in countries such as Bolivia and, and Venezuela. Tide also has its, its problems because it implies a kind of ebb and flow, a kind of a pendulum idea to politics where you swing to one side and then you swing back to the other, but the center always pretty much remains the same. I think it's much better if we're trying to address the title of advance and retreat, it's better to look at what we've seen over the last um, two decades as cycles or waves of struggles. So then we re return to the question. The pink tide, if we accept it as it's commonly understood, I think we can easily argue that it's advanced, certainly in the last two years. We've seen even the brief removal of power of the movement towards socialism in Bolivia, but it's election victory uh, this year following important street mobilizations to force those elections to a head. In Venezuela, we've just seen recently the Socialist Party of Venezuela regain control of the National Assembly. In Argentina, we've seen the, the Kirchnerista forces return to power um, after a, a brief period of three years of the um, new right under Mauricio Macri. And we've seen some, some reversals in the other direction, Uruguay, the Frente Amplio having, having lost. Um, but beyond looking at just individual countries and, and election results, I think you know, what we've seen is a result, it's the, a broader tendency where in general we've seen broad left forces, where, the, where these broad left forces have been able to build strong political parties to establish themselves as the main party, whether that be in government or opposition. We can look at that in, with the MAS in Bolivia, the PSUV in Venezuela, the Workers' Party in Brazil, um, and, and, and the Frente Amplio uh, in Uruguay from what had been traditionally third forces or small political forces are now in many cases, the gravitational force on which politics uh, revolves around. Uh, although we've also seen that in other cases, this hasn't been quite achieved where the process has been stalled, whether as a result of splits within the left, uh, ongoing support for established traditional parties of the center left or the, where the left is still in the process of, of accumulating forces. Um, in terms of moving beyond just the electoral, we've seen even with the COVID pandemic, the protests in the streets have continued, uh, whether that's uh, uh, largely around social and democratic demands. 
We've seen the victory for abortion rights in Argentina, the demand and the su uh, successful referendum for a constituent assembly in Chile against the parliamentary coup in, in Brazil, in Guatemala for presidential resignation at a constituent assembly. Um, so we've seen, uh, you know, continued street protests, even if the outcomes of these have, have been uh, Different, uh, or, or at least the, 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 in some cases, only receiving partial partial victories. Of course, the strength of those movements has determined the outcomes. We've also seen, though, that um, the, the right when in power, uh, such as, for instance, in Brazil or the year of the coup government in, 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 in Bolivia, have been very powerful in being able to quickly reverse a lot of the social gains that, that had occurred while the left, left was in power. Um, and the left has struggled to be able to stop that when the right has been in, in power. But it's come at a high electoral cost. For the right, as we've seen, for instance, with as I mentioned, the mass victory in Bolivia, and the the weakening of Jair Bolsonaro, the far right president in Brazil, in the recent regional elections. So overall, I think what we could see on the one hand is that politics has shifted to to the left. Left parties and struggles for, over the last few decades have been able to to very much sort of shift the discussion in society, uh, even if that has not necessarily equated to actual concrete changes in many of these countries, or certainly far from transformational uh, changes uh, that, are, that have occurred. So I think in that regards, there, there has been an advance, even as I say, partial and perhaps more on the level of discourse than on the level of actual reforms that have occurred, not to, under, not to downplay the reforms that have taken. But I think we can also un observe another feature on this cycle of wave. Uh, in the previous cycle, in the, you know, the initial pink tide, um, you know, we had a Venezuelan revolutionary process on the ascendancy, and we had Brazil as by far the largest country in the region playing a key linchpin role in the process of integration. Of course, this is a double-edged sword that Brazil played. On the one hand, very much interested in, the, in, in reducing US influence in the region, so happy to go with regional uh, integration processes, but of course, always hoping to do so in the defense of its own interest as the biggest, biggest country uh, in the region. Today, we have a different scenario. Um, on the one hand, we have a situation uh, in, in Venezuela uh, where, um, as a result of five years of right-wing political violence, insurrections and coup attempts, combined with crippling sanctions and errors by the Maduro government, has left the, the country and the revolutionary movement in a much weaker situation. Obviously, it's not time to go into what's happening in Venezuela at the moment, uh, but certainly, the, you know, it, there's a, it, there's, there clearly is a debate in, in, in Venezuela and abroad, you know, about what, where has the, or what has happened to the revolutionary impulse in that country? Has it diminished, diminished or perhaps even gone? Has that revolutionary horizon of 21st century been put uh, on the back burner or been closed off given the current situation? There's no doubt government policy has prioritized short-term survival. In this sense, it's been successful uh, in defeating the, the right-wing successive attempts to overthrow it, but it's been less so in trying to strengthen or at least cohere its revolutionary base in order to be able to push forward um, uh, with, with its concept of 21st century socialism. Along with this, we've seen the axis of integration shift away from one where Venezuela under Chavez and Brazil under Lula were key to this process, to one where more moderate forces in Mexico and Argentina with Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, AMLO, and in Argentina, uh, Fernandez, um, uh, in, in President Fernandez uh, in, in power, uh, have those two countries at its core. It has a solid basis of non-intervention in the in the area, but must let much a much less ambitious project of integration, one where politics is essentially put put aside, and even questions of regional bodies of regional integration, uh, such as the ones that were created in the first wave, uh, are so far not been really re-established. Here, Bolivia is seeking to play an important role, and in fact has raised the you know um, raised the idea of Eva Morales being the new president of, of UNASUR, the Union of South American Nations, as a, as a way to at least begin to cohere that, that body. Um, but we really only see really modest attempts to revive these bodies of regional integration at, at the moment. So we see, can see simultaneous advances um, and at the same time retreats, at least in terms of the moderations of the, the horizons of these struggles. Uh, what, um, in, in this new wave, in this new cycle of protest, what remains important is that we can see that there haven't been key defeats inflicted. Um, in fact, Bolivia showed that the partial defeat was able to, to be reversed. We've seen protests remain on the street and openings for new advances in Ecuador with elections to be held very soon and with the potential for uh, a more radical left candidate to be re-elected to the presidency.
But what's also clear, and I'll finish on this because I lost track of time. I'm not sure how much time I've got left, but I'm guessing not not too much. Um, what what is clear is that there still is that 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 necessary patient work required of building a po political organisation, uh, one that is able to cohere and unify the struggles um, it, it, with a perspective for power, one that is able to raise a very clear vision uh, for the different way of running society, different way of of doing politics, and one that is open to democratic discussion and debate about how is the best way to be able to move forward based on a concrete analysis of the available balance of forces. This still remains a very key task. And we see this both in those examples where such instruments have at least been part or begun to be built, partially built, for instance, in Bolivia and in Venezuela, and even more so in places like Chile, where we've had now a number of years of struggle and the movement now uh, having achieved its goal of a constituent assembly, but one where the real threat uh, remains, that it will be traditional political forces that will ultimately have the biggest say in the rewriting of, of this new constitution. So that still remains in this context of, as I said, um, advance and retreat within a new cycle of struggle, um, the key task that the left faces uh, in, in the region. I think that's my 10 minutes, thank you.